everyone, it's Hayes and today's video we're once again going through the Miraculous Monday meme review where my friend Hedge sends me the very best Miraculous memes and we react to them in some way and I try not to waffle about something that isn't significant as I'm <laughs> really bad at it. Anyway, <laughs> let's start this besties. The first meme. So dear Bunnix, go into the past and catch the butterfly miraculous. And Hedge says, but she can't use time travel to change the future except for all those times where she did do that. That's why, so as of yesterday, although I think you're seeing this video a few days later, as of filming this, yesterday I uploaded my debunking video on the Lila Manon theory, which people have been trying to convince me in the comments. Nobody has succeeded thus far, and I doubt you will. Like, to be fair, just to say, I'm not completely against the theory, I do actually think it's kinda cool, but as of right now, there just isn't enough evidence for it. If when season six starts and Manon is suspiciously more in the show and we find out more stuff, then yeah, I'll totally get behind it, but as of right now, there isn't enough. So I was like, okay, but like one of the points in that video is like, if it is true, and let's just assume it is for the sake of this part, let's assume it's true, I don't trust them to do it well because of time travel. Like for example, what does Young Bunnick say in, is it recreation? It's like, oh, I can't help, but I could go fetch you there. It's like, I can help in that way, but I can't actually like do anything to affect any change. That's helpful, yeah. <laughs> However, like the whole plot point of Cat Blank is that she goes back in time to change stuff, obviously. Marinette helps her, but same sort of thing. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, that's not like there's a massive problem whenever you include time travel in anything. And that's why it has to be done so well, because it's just like, well, let's say time travel exists. Like, well, why, why couldn't you go back in time and, I don't know, killed Hitler when he was a baby? So what happened didn't end up happening sort of thing. Like questions like that. and. It just gets a bit tricky and stuff and yeah you just need to know time travel really well to be able to execute it really well and because they've already messed it up assuming the theory is correct I don't trust the writers well enough to pull this off well so that's also whilst I don't mind the theory I'm kind of hoping it's not true because of that reason also so I trust them with many other things time travel is not one of those other things <laughs> anyway next meme uh, Mary's trauma is a repressed trauma, that's why she doesn't remember it until derision. <laughs> I sense copium from the writers. Yeah, I don't. Whilst I understand repressed trauma, I can only get behind repressed trauma if perhaps Marinette had moved to a new school, she never saw Kim or Chloe again, or really anyone from that class, um, and she hadn't been to that pool where the, the incident happened. But it's been like by the time I get to derision, it's been like almost a whole year. Like in derision, they say like when Soculean gets, um, I'm not to say evicted, <laughs> when she gets thrown out of school, I think they say it's like, it's, I want to say two weeks left. I can't quite remember. Near the end of the school year, and we're at the same place again in derision. For example, uh, recreation right at the end. It's the start of the next new school year, and at the start of episode 25, confirmation. Nardi's on the TV like, oh, it's the start of the summer holidays in Paris. So it's a whole school year. So to say it's a repressed trauma when she's around the people who caused the trauma and been to both locations, the school and the pool, uh, obviously more so the school, but she's been to the pool plenty of times between like the flashback events of derision and actual, the rest of the present day events of derision. To say it's repressed, it, it's a bit too repressed. I could definitely get behind it being repressed if she went to a different school. She was like, yeah, I can't handle these people, these bullies. I'm gonna go to a different school. She didn't see Chloe, she didn't see Kim, and she didn't go to that pool either because of the trauma. If you, you know, associate trauma with a place or people, you tend not to go there, not to be with them if you can. Obviously, I know that's not always possible. So while I can get behind repressed trauma as like a, just like a plot thing in general, because it's an actual thing, I get it. I definitely don't think that's what's happening here. I think it was their way of trying to explain, uh, first of all, why Chloe's not getting her redemption, and second of all, uh, why Marinette is the way she is with her creepy behaviour. But again, that doesn't add up because she wasn't like this with Luca in like season three. So... That's why you gotta plan things. Right, next meme. <laughs> so, oh, I have the statue of Gabriel, babes. <laughs> And Thomas had never seen such 
I'm not sure what word that is supposed to be before. I mean, oh, I've worked it out. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what the non-swear word equivalent is, so I hope you uh, know what it word it is, but like, I am not happy. I need to, I've got so many video ideas planned. I just, I've still, <laughs> I like literally every week I have to look through my list. So I usually like plan like the next like few weeks out on like a Sunday afternoon. I just like to get ahead of the game. And I've just got a whole list of video ideas. And I'm like, oh, I could do that. I could do that. I've got so many to do. I wanna talk about Gabriel's redemption. I wanna talk about Andre's weird ass redemption. That was just, yeah, yeah, don't, I hate Andre's word redemption. That was a strange, <laughs> strange direction to take. Um, but the statue with Gabriel, no, I hate it. It also looks slightly ugly as well. Like they could have given him a better haircut to be that statue. Can you imagine him waterlized forever and the metal melted down from the Alliance rings and they put you in that pose with that haircut? Mm, I'd be coming back from the grave to haunt that. No, thank you. Next meme. Uh, so, Cat Noir to Cat Blank, <laughs> Claw Noir to White Claw. I've never had White Claw. Is it alcohol? I don't know. I feel like it's an American drink. I hear about a lot of Americans talking about it. Honestly, Claw Noir has grown on me. I still don't like the hair very much. I don't mind the colour, it's just the style of it. Bit strange, I'll be honest with you. But, yeah, it's growing on me. A lot of people are kind of annoyed at me because I didn't like the reverse special that much. And don't get me wrong, I still think it was good, but just in my opinion, and I know I'm in the minority here, um, it wasn't as good as the other specials. Like, I understand animation is very expensive. I get it. I know I'm not an animator, but like I've learned bits and pieces as I've been making videos. And whilst I'm still definitely not an expert and I don't even really know how to do it, <laughs> which is, I don't think I need to know that. Um, I, I just didn't, like, really just given a lack of budget for this one because if you compare it to the New York and Shanghai specials, the already, New York especially, has so many more characters. We got, like, as in character models, so there's Aeon, Uncanny Valley, Jess, also Eagle and uh, Sparrow. Then we have Jess's mum and Aeon's mum, both their civilian hero forms. There's other heroes like Hot Dog Dan, that man who opens doors, the president, there's also like the Power Rangers, there's other heroes, plus the Akuma villain in that episode. He has several forms because he gets Akumatized. He's also a villain in his own right at the start. They have all the different like background settings, whatever, for the plane, then the hotel, the museum, other places in New York, you know? So I'm like, there were obviously like the New York special had a lot of budget behind it and I feel like this one in comparison definitely did not because it took place in our Paris, the Paris the show is set in, right? Because there's only, so they had Marinette and Adrian reverse forms, Claw Noir, Shady Bug and then their new forms and then all the like Lady Ubiquity stuff. I just still feel, from a world building perspective, feel that it would have been so much more effective to carry out the reverse special. In the reverse! since it was called that. In New York special they go to New York, in the Shanghai special they go to Shanghai. So this is the reverse special, they should maybe go to the reverse. Just my opinion. I still liked what we got. I liked what we got. I didn't think it was terrible. But to me, all three specials, it's the weakest one because it, to me it was like a sci-fi special. I know Miraculous isn't science fiction, it's fantasy. But the, when you bring in parallel universes, it just becomes sci-fi. So to me, the reverse special is a sci-fi special. Sci-fi is a huge interest of mine. I'm doing it for my PhD, so I was like, yes, let's do it. Let's do all the sci-fi stuff. I mean, we didn't get any of the sci-fi stuff, and I was pretty sad. <laughs> anyway, next meme. So Lucanet and Adrian, ooh, disgusting. Miraculous season four. <laughs> Here's Adrianette. Honestly, I think I. Oh, I don't know. Let's say I think I said this at the start of season four, but I've made many a video since the start of season four. I've no idea what I've said anymore. We're actually nearly at a thousand videos. Can you believe that? Anyway, um, <laughs> I didn't expect Lucanet to last very long um, and it only lasted an episode, if that really. Um, but I did expect Adragami to go a bit further, not because I ship it. Makes me want to throw up. Um, <laughs> but just because Adrian isn't as in tune with his feelings as Marinette and also Kagami isn't as in tune with feelings like Luca is, he just seems to know what's up from just breathing in your presence. Right? You don't have to say anything, he's just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I know. <laughs> I need a Luca in my life. Um, but um, I expected Adrigami to last much longer, 
be honest. Although I am still, even though I'm a Love Squest stan, I love Adrianette. I'm still disappointed in the turns Adrianette took. Like, just for me, to me, Adrian has been in love with Marinette this whole time. I believe that, I've always believed that, but he just didn't realise it because of the way he's been brought up and I think that's fair. However, for him to realise he has feelings for Marinette in the way he did was just bizarre, especially since now we had the reverse special in the middle of all of that. So I'm like, when did you have the time? You didn't! You didn't. And honestly, I'm still surprised you managed to go to school the day after the reverse special because I would have been skiving that day. No way, I would have had no sleep apart from maybe like an hour. Mm -mm, I wouldn't have been going to school after the events of the Reaper special. No, thank you. I'll stay in bed. <laughs> Next meme. Ladybug, the Akuma must be on extremely small piece of jewellery. Do you see it? Alia, who loses her glasses and transforming into Serena Rouge. <laughs> that would be me. I can't see much without, without my glasses. I've had, always had bad eyesight. When did I first get my glasses? I think I was like, Probably year one, which for everyone who's not in the UK is probably almost about five years old and I'm 27. So I've had the glasses for the vast majority of my life. I didn't actually need to use them all the time. I only needed to wear them when I was um, reading and writing like on the computer or a book or whatever. Um, but then a couple of years ago, my eyesight just got really bad and I had to wear them all the time. I hope the miraculous does some at Serena's eyes because I'd, I'd be screwed if I was a hero. But like, no, I cannot see. I literally can't see much without my glasses. I can see like the general shapes of things, but otherwise I'm like, what's going on? I have no idea. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much the only times I don't wear my glasses is when I'm asleep, when I'm showering, and when I'm doing my makeup, obviously. Yeah, that's, I, I need them all the time. I'd be screwed. I'd need glasses as a hero. I'd have to use a horse miraculous, obviously, but I'd hope Kalki could give me, you know, prescription lenses. <laughs> Next meme. Marinette's never gonna fall in love with a statue. Also Marinette. Ooh, I hate the scenes. Always hate it. Always will. Ooh, can't stand it. Uh, but never underestimate Marinette when it comes to Adrian. I still... When you... S I don't know how he managed to... Like, keep going with it. After like 10 seconds, maybe even less, of someone doing that to me, I'd be like, no, sorry, I'm real, you're saying this to me, I already know. Like, oh, I understand he apologises after when he feels bad because he's embarrassed. I, I, I'm not blaming him completely, but like, how was he physically able to make himself do that? I would have been cringing so bad, I'd be like, there's no way. No, mm, we have to stop now. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Next meme. Uh, I will give you all the miraculouses so you can bring your dead wife back. Thanks, Felix. Now I can finally take revenge from that meanie ladybug. But what about my dead aunt? Emily is important to all, but defeating that meanie ladybug comes first. I will never understand what my aunt saw in you. Yeah, he was obviously quite a different, apparently nice person all the way back then. I would really love, I don't know if we're gonna get it because he's dead, but like, I really want to know more of the story of like Gabriel's like character progression before the show basically because like we sell those um like the stuff for, like this like family's food truck or whatever and he's like uh, i'm gonna say punk but i'm not 100 percent sure that what he is doing like he has the mohawk he's like the leather jacket and stuff like that he's kind of like punk style to me and then we learned from the story and other images we've seen that he was kind of more poor and he knew audrey and andre before they became whoever they are now you know what i mean so i'd love to know not necessarily the creation of Adrian, I don't really care about that that much, <laughs> but like before all of that, how did he get from Gabby Grisette, who, Grisette, am I saying that correctly? That person, <laughs> to a fashion designer who met Emily, because when he met Emily they'd already bought the house, they're in like the back garden of the mansion, so obviously he'd have to have found some fame, rich success, because it seems he starts off super poor, and it also seems that Emily's parents, we found out from representation, weren't really helping them. So I'd like to know how we got from that to that. Even before Sentinel Monster stuff, before Miraculous, it's how did we get that? I'd love to see that progression. Like I said, I'm not sure we're gonna see it because he's dead. <laughs> oh, that's one of the other characters tells us, like Amelie, now we know it's Amelie. But yeah, yeah, Gabriel is a psychopath. However, that being said, even though he definitely could have achieved it this season, I did kind of like, part of the reason in being is that he was like, basically completely losing himself um because like as you see in um 
evolution. The, like, he could have very easily given the, the pen drive to the um, past version of him to fix the peacock before Emily uses it so she'd still be alive, which would just mess up all the time travel stuff, but <laughs> he could have done it. But then he gets distracted by Ladybug. So I do actually kind of like that aspect to it all. I think it's really interesting. I really like it because to me, Gabriel has always had a really solid motive this whole time. I'm going to be really interested to see what Lila's motive is going to be. Um, but I did kind of like seeing him gradually lose it this season, basically. I think it was really interesting to see. I think Gabriel season four and five was definitely the best execution of him, in my opinion. I can't wait to do my full character analysis on him. It's gonna be so fun. But so besties, the final meme of the meme review is the meme review of you a submission meme, where one of you um, submits a meme to be looked at. In the meme review, it's in my Discord server, it's linked down below. Please go and join it if you're not already. It's a fun time, you don't have to submit memes in there. You can just come in and talk and it'll be fun. So the meme review has to be a meme you have made, not one you found. We have a separate channel for that and then everyone votes on them and then Hedge puts the most voted one in the meme review. So the credit for this goes to Claude Noir with 5,000 O's. So Nino reveals his identity and Ali's identity to Adrian. He starts getting tons of hate and criticism for it and he stops being a fan favourite. Kagami tells Felix, who killed Ladybug a few episodes ago, about Marinette being Ladybug without Marinette's consent, just so she can be together with Felix. And yet she doesn't get a chance of the hate Nino got and still remains a fan favourite. Hey, listen, okay, this meme doesn't apply to me. <laughs> Whilst I definitely don't hate Kagami anymore, she's definitely grown on me this season. Um, I will always prefer Nino to Kagami. They're both in the wrong. And if anything, I definitely think Kagami's is worse. <laughs> because Felix was a villain. And whilst we all know Adrian is trustworthy and Nino didn't 100% know that, he just thinks Adrian is trustworthy, obviously we know. Um, but like, it's on him to reveal his own identity. Um, more annoyed about the Ali one since that's not his secret, but I, I, don't, I didn't mind it so much since she is his girlfriend and we know Adrian is trustworthy. However, with Kagami, Felix has been an anti-hero, stole all the miraculouses at the end of last season, but I definitely agree with the general sentiment of this. A lot of people do dislike Nino for this, but don't care, like, just like don't even like mention it when it comes to Kagami. It's just like, oh, yeah, well, that, whatever, that thing, let's move on anyway. You know what I mean? So I agree with the sentiment of this, but I am not one of these people because I dislike them both for it, but I will always prefer Nino to Kagami. <laughs> like I said, she's growing on me. I definitely don't hate her as much as I used to, um, but yeah, Nino over Kagami any day of the week. <laughs> so there you go, besties. That was the whole meme review. I'd love to know what you think. What was your favourite meme? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.